In this episode you're going to discover the top 10 things that cruise lines don't tell you and don't want you to know about. Hello cruise mates, welcome back to our explore with us family channel. Please subscribe to the channel and you'll never miss the next video, packed full of interesting family travel tips, hacks and advices. So let's start with our topic. First thing that the cruise lines don't tell you, is that the cruise ships do not wait for passengers who are late back to the ship. We observed it ourselves from top of the deck, how excursion passenger were still running and waving towards the ship, whilst we were departing from the harbor. Perhaps they have gone self-touring on an excursion and have lost track of time and don't get back by the onboarding and departure time. If you've gone on a cruise line excursion which you've booked on board and it's running late, the ship will of course wait for their own people. But if you are on your own and late back to the harbor and the onboarding, the ship will leave without you, they also leave you on your own. It's up to you to make your own plans and either get yourself back to the ship at the next port or head home. In such case, the cruise line do not provide support and help. Often the port agent will try and be as helpful as possible. Also if you have a medical emergency and you have to leave the ship for medical reasons, the cruise line will also then leave you to sort it out yourself. So again very important to make sure that you have travel insurance to cover yourself if you are perhaps late back to ship and stranded in the port or if you have a medical issue. The cruise line will take no responsibility for sorting you out if you are left behind. Second thing that cruise lines don't tell you and don't want you to know is that the ports that are listed on your itinerary are not guaranteed. So the cruise line doesn't tell you up front that you may not go to all of the ports that are listed on your itinerary. At the captain's discretion, the cruise lines are able to change or not call into a port if it's deemed that it's either unsafe, the weather's too bad, if there is some incident that prevents them from going into that port, or they feel it's not suitable going into that specific port. Of course they usually do and try, and do everything they possibly can do, to make all the ports, but it is just not warranted. Normally it's due to weather. We have also been on a cruise where two of the ports have had to be cancelled and skipped. The third thing we want to talk about, is that people do really go missing off cruise ships. Luckily not to many but the sad fact is, that it does happen. Up to 19 people go overboard, or missing from a cruise ship every year. Now bear in mind there are millions of people that go cruising, so the number is pretty small. Also bear in mind that it is pretty much impossible to fall off a cruise ship. Anyone who's been on a cruise ship will know, that the railings are pretty high, and so most people go overboard tend to have done it, because they've either deliberately jumped overboard, or they've been very drunk and irresponsible and done things like climbed up on the railings. Fourth thing that the cruise lines don't tell you and don't talk about, is about crime. There are even prison cells on a ship. A ship is not a crime-free zone, crime does also happen on a ship. The good news is, though the level of crime is likely to be much lower than it is on land. Now it gets a little bit tricky in terms of the statistics and how much crime that's actually happened on cruise ships, because there's no strict regulations about where crime gets reported, and to whom it gets reported to. 
Now in terms of the reported crime statistics, which are pretty low, the main reported crime is actually assault and sexual assault. Please bear in mind, these numbers are still pretty small. It's also not known how much theft takes place, because it's felt that many of these statistics on small theft are probably not reported, and just sorted out within the ship. As already mentioned, most cruise ships have some kind of prison facility. There is a special designated small space on board which is known as the brig. The brig is the nautical term for a jail on a vessel, including a cruise ship. The term comes from the word brigantine, which is a type of two-masted sailing ship formerly used to house criminals. Now this may just be a small room where a crew member or a passenger that needs to actually be held in a prison is locked up. So crime is luckily not significant but it does still exist on a ship. Fifth things that cruise lines do not talk about is that they actually do dump a lot of stuff into the ocean. There are very strict rules and regulations about what can and cannot be put into the ocean. And in fact cruise lines follow some stricter regulations than they are required to by maritime law. So let's take a look at what actually they are allowed to put into the ocean. They are allowed to put into the ocean sewerage once they're into international waters. The maritime regulations actually allow you to put untreated sewage into the sea, however cruise lines follow the CLIA regulations. It stands for the Cruise Line Association. Food waste is also normally processed. It's crushed down turned into almost a liquid form and this can also be released into the ocean once they head into international waters. Grey water is another key side product of cruise ships, so this is stuff that comes out of your cabin showers and perhaps also from washing dishes. And again this water is normally treated and is able to be put into the ocean. All glass is separated into color, it's crushed down and put into bags and is disembarked in certain ports and they sold on to people who do recycling. Your cabin steward and other people on board and the environmental team will make sure that all other waste is sorted, so paper, plastics, etc. is sorted. Many cruise ships will incinerate a lot of rubbish but are not allowed to put that ash into the ocean and it gets taken off when in port. There are very strict regulations on things, they are allowed or not allowed to put into the ocean. So those have to be packed up and they are disembarked in a port. One thing we would like to recommend you to do is, do a behind the scenes tour which includes meeting the environmental officer. Do it because it's really interesting to see. Go and have a look at the whole recycling and the treatment plant on board a cruise ship, and they will explain in much more detail what that specific ship does in terms of getting rid of waste. The sixth thing that cruise lines don't tell you is that they do have a morgue on board. There is an average of 200 deaths occurring on cruise ships each year. These numbers are not wholly accurate, because numerous ships never disclose information about their accidents or never know that they occur at all. Most of the death tend to be elderly passengers. And most of the deaths are due to natural causes. So the numbers dying on board are relatively low when you consider the huge amount of people that go cruising. If someone dies on board the normal procedure is to take people off at the nearest port, have a death certificate and repatriate them home. If you hear over the public address system Operation Rising Star, that indicates that there has been a death on board. Because of the nature of a cruise being meant to be fun, relaxing, and full of happiness. Regular passengers won't be informed of the death on the ship, unless traveling with the deceased. Operation Rising Star will be the only sad hint you'll get as a passenger, 
that someone died on board. Seventh thing that cruise lines don't tell you about is flags of convenience. You might have been wondering that although the cruise lines are owned for example by Italians, American, or perhaps British, they still register the ships in foreign places such as Bahamas, Bermudas, Liberia, or Panama. The reason for this is that they do not have to follow the rules of their country where they are owned. They don't have to follow for example the UK rules or the US rules. Instead, they can follow the rules of the country where they're registered, and those countries which are flags of convenience countries, tend to have much more liberal employment laws, environmental laws, safety laws, etc. So, in the end the cruise lines are able to operate their ships with less strict regulations, than they would if they would be registered for example in the UK or United States. That's why it is called flags of convenience. Eighth thing that cruise lines don't tell you about is the strategical layout design of the decks. Have you ever noticed the layout of the ship is designed in such a way so that you spend more? It's quite obvious on the main promenade deck. The main dining room is at the very rear of the ship, and the theater at the very front of the ship. And these are the two places most of us visit every evening. For example at our last cruise on the MSC Virtuosa, to get from the buffet dining room to the Le Grand Theater, we had to walk from the end of the ship to the front, passing the boulevard, art gallery, music walk bars and lounges, casino and shops which are all revenue generating. Another layout design feature that has big significance, is up on the top deck. We want our pools up top and in the sunshine, but this caused stability issues. Were you not wondering about the size of the pools? Have you noticed that the pools are small for the number of guests? On land they would be usually for this number of people much bigger. A common feature is a shallow water rim around the pool to make them look bigger. Have you noticed and wondered why the pools are emptied when the ocean gets rough? Here the answers, water is very heavy and dynamic. For example the atmosphere pool on the MSC Virtuosa, covers an area of 1700 square meter. It is one of the most largest to be found at sea. Even middle-sized pools on ships add thousands of tons of water weight to the top of the ship, risking to making it, what the engineers call, top-heavy, and challenging to keep stable. So, pools are placed dead center of the deck and as midship as possible. And pools at the rear of ships are very small for this reason. Jacuzzi pools will mirror each other on each side to balance out the weight. Additional counterbalancing weight is then added at the bottom of the ship. And when the ocean gets rough and the pool water starts moving around, draining the pool helps with stability. That's why by rough sea, you will not be able to swim either. Ninth thing that cruise lines don't tell you about, are their tough cancellation policies. Yes, they are part of your booking contract. But these are the very small letters with a very big meaning, cruise lines don't really tell you up front. Their cancellation policies are incredibly tight and very very strict. Importantly make sure that you understand what the cancellation conditions are when you book a cruise. Particularly booking a cruise way in advance might bring such cancellation risks with it. So for example in many cases you will lose up to 25% of the cruise fare if you cancel up to 90 days before the departure. Normally what that means is whatever deposit you've paid, you will lose it. 
Between 90 days and 60 days you can lose anything up to 50% or sometimes even 75% of the cruise fare if you cancel. And after 60 days and certainly after 30 days you're going to lose anything between 75% and even up to 100% of the fare. Also important to know, many cruise lines count a name change as a cancellation. So if you have perhaps traveling with a friend or a partner and they have to drop out for whatever reason, and you want to substitute someone, many cruise lines will count that as a cancellation, so please watch out. Make sure that you understand what the cancellation charges or penalties are going to be, and take up travel insurance that's going to cover cancellations, because you never know what's going to happen, particularly when you are booking a cruise, way in advance. And the last but not least, our tenth thing, that cruise lines don't tell you about is, the secret behind the funnels. A funnel is the smokestack or chimney on a ship, used to expel boiler steam and smoke or engine exhaust. They are also commonly referred to as stacks. The ship's funnel is hard to miss, but they have always played a different role to what we passengers think they do. Way back in the days when liners, like the Titanic, were fueled by coal engines. The lines would often add additional funnels because they symbolized power and speed. Same what we observe as well in the car industry. The bigger and more exhaust pipes at a car, we associate with more speed and power. Many liners had extra fake funnels with no purpose other than for marketing. Even today, funnels still play a massive marketing rather than functional role. Of course, they still expel and direct exhaust fumes out, and pull air into the ship for various equipment, but they are much bigger and grander than needed. They are designed as, symbols to identify, and help the line be instantly recognized and to stand out. That's why each cruise line has different shaped funnels and colors. For example, the iconic MSC curved canopy with the bundle of several smokestacks, or the Carnival Cruise Line with their wing funnel, or Holland America with their oval shape, or even Celebrity with their chunky one with X logo. The funnel makes ships easier also to identify in port, and out at sea, from a distance. As there is much wasted space inside these funnels, as they are bigger and grander than needed, some cruise lines are starting to use funnels to incorporate various extra features or venues. For example Carnival Miracle has a restaurant in the funnel, and Disney Wish has even a suite within the funnel. And our favorite and classic secret we discovered while researching on this topic here. Did you know, that the Titanic's fourth smokestack was actually only a dummy, containing a first-class smoking room? Interesting, isn't it? Thank you for watching. We hope you found this clip informative. If you want to see more of our cruise reviews, with valuable tips, tricks, and hacks for your cruise, then have a look on our channel. And if you don't want to miss our new clip uploads, then hit the red subscribe button, and join our growing, Explore With Us, Family Travel Channel. We and other cruisers would also love to hear about your cruise experiences. Please share your views and experiences with us and other cruisers here in the comments below. In the description below you will find some more infos, and also the links to our cruise gadgets, which we had with us and would like to recommend to you as well. You will also find a link with some nice cruise outfits, shirts, caps, accessories, etc. Have a look, maybe you find something suitable for you as well.
Stay well, be good and see you soon. We would like to recommend you this three clips here. They are as well from our channel and could be of an interest for you. Have a look.